Amen. Well, that, that beautiful verse uh, song was right from verse 11 of our psalm for today. And it was a, a prayer of David, a request of David. And we're really going to get into verse 11 as we go through this psalm today. So will you join us in Psalm 86? And let me uh, ask you this question. Did you know that at one time in your life that you had two hearts? You say, well, I didn't have two hearts. No, there was a time in your life that you had two hearts. Now, you wouldn't remember it because you were just an embryo. Now, remember the psalm says we were fearfully and wonderfully made and God knew our every part and everything about us when we were still being formed in our mother's womb. But they know now that in the early stages of life in the human body, uh, when you were what we would call an embryo, there were basically just two vessels that carried blood. Just two. And in the middle of each one was a bulge. And that bulge would pump. And so that was what we would say was a heart. But there was two of them. And the blood would circulate through this tiny, tiny embryo. And then as the human body grows and develops, these two vessels with the bulge, they merge together and twist a little bit. And that grows into what we now know is the human heart. And if you would look at a, a picture of a human heart, you can almost see as if it was two bulges that twisted and, and came together. And uh, that's what you used to be, two-hearted. Well, I know that it didn't really matter. It didn't seem like two hearts back when you were an embryo. But one of the main problems we have as Christians today is when we're trying to live with two hearts. We have one heart for the Lord. We do truly love the Lord and we want to serve Him and we want to please Him. But we keep getting drawn away by other things. And maybe they're sinful things, maybe they're worldly things, but maybe they're also things like worry and fear. A good things that all of a sudden we find our heart divided and we're really not focusing on God like we want to because we're always being emotionally pulled in another direction. And that's like having two hearts. Well, you can't really function with two hearts, can you? And David prays in this great psalm, in verse 11, Teach me your way, O Lord, I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Lord, let me have a united heart that I might live fearing your name, that I might really focus in on you. Well, we're going to talk about that today, but uh, Lorraine's going to read the whole psalm for us. And our prayer today is going to be, Lord, unite my heart. Teach me your ways so that I walk in them and unite my heart that I might fear your name. That's the secret to a really good life, having a united heart and fearing the Lord. Mm -hmm. Psalm 86, bow down your ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am holy. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I cry to you all day long. Rejoice the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord, nor are there any works like your works. All, Asian, all nations whom you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify your name forevermore. For great is your mercy toward me, and you have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, the proud have risen against me, and a mob of violent men have sought my life, and have not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in mercy and truth. O turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Show me a sign for good that those who, who have, hate me may see it and be ashamed, because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Well, now, as you were listening to the psalm, perhaps you noticed that David is not specific about whatever trouble he is in, but he does make a couple references that, that there are people that are against him. In verse 14, the proud have risen against me. A mob of violent men have sought my life 
And then toward the end of the psalm, he says, Show, do a sign, Lord, do something that even these people will see that you are keeping your covenant with me and that you're coming through for me. So we really don't know what the situation was that David was in. And he doesn't focus so much on his enemies here. But what I want to point out to you is three things. And we're going to mostly be praying over the third. We will see David's devotion. In other words, he knew his own walk with God. And then we will also see what he focused on in terms of God's character. And then in this psalm, there are five requests. Two of them we've already seen in verse 11. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart. So he's praying to God, Lord, I want to know your way. And I want my heart to be right. Well, isn't that a good prayer? Isn't that a good motive to say, Lord, I want to know your way so that I can walk the right way. And I want my heart to be right. So let's just pause right now. Why don't you ask him those two things? Lorraine will lead us in prayer. But before we even get into this breakdown of the psalm, just ask him, Lord, show me your way for my life and unite my heart. Mm -hmm. Lord God, we ask you, just show me the way, Lord God. Just show us, Father God. And we thank you, Father God. Show me, show them, show whoever asks, Father, that we might follow you. Show us the way of your heart, Lord God, that you might be able to teach us and show us and cover us and be with us. We thank you, Lord. Thank you and praise you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I just want to quickly point out in verses 1 through 4, let's look at David's devotion. You see, it's, it's a man that's devoted to God or a woman that's devoted to God that really cares about the condition of their heart. Most people that aren't devoted to God, they just go after whatever their pleasures they're after. They don't really care to evaluate the condition of their heart. But David is evaluating the condition of his heart, and he wants more of God. He wants to be more focused on God. But let me just point this out. In verse 1, he refers to himself as poor and needy. And that speaks of humility, to know your need for God. And then verse 2 speaks of his devotion. Some translations even use the word holy. He says, preserve my life for I am holy. Or other translations, for I am devoted. What that means is I'm set apart for you. And then in verse 2, he talks about serving the Lord. Save your servant. He talks about trusting the Lord who trusts in you. And verse 3, we see he prayed daily for I cry to you all day long. In verse 4, he say, he's talking about lifting up his soul to the Lord. For to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. And in verse 12, he's committed to praise and worship. I will praise you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. So there's a man who really is connected to God, but he wants to go further. We're not talking about a, a someone who's lost and, or even someone who's living a cardinal life. We're talking about somebody who's devoted and they're humble and they serve and they trust, but they still want more. And maybe that's you. Maybe you're committed and you're watching this, this video because you want more of God. And you're dedicated and you trust the Lord. But there's something about trusting the Lord and being dedicated that's almost like putting salt on food that makes you thirst for more. And David's clue here in terms of how our hearts are united in verses 5 through 15, he focuses all on who God is. There are so many attributes of God mentioned here that I want to remind you of. In verse 5, he, he talks about, For Lord, you are good, and you're ready to forgive, you're plenteous in mercy. And that, down in verse 15, he repeats this, God, you're full of compassion, you're gracious, you're long-suffering, you're plenteous in mercy and truth. See, he's starting to unite his heart right there by focusing on who God is and by focusing on the attributes of God. He mentions in verses 6 and 7 that the Lord answers prayer. In the day of trouble I will call upon you, for you will answer me. So this confidence in prayer. But notice he's got a good focus and perspective on God. Lorraine, would you read for us again verses 8 through 10? And as she's reading these verses, just look at how he's elevating God. How he's exalting God. Verses 8 through 10. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor are there any works like your works. All nations whom you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. 
for you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Wow, notice you're great. There's none like you. You're above all others. And that includes our worries and our problems and our difficulties. Lord, you're above all of that. Mm -hmm. So here's a piece of advice. If, if you're struggling with a divided heart, and what is a divided heart? It's a heart that, yes, we love God and we want to serve God, but we keep worrying about this other stuff. Mm -hmm. We keep getting drawn into these other entanglements. Some of them, like I mentioned earlier, are sinful, but many of them are just living life. And, and we get caught into these what if this, what if that, and our heart becomes divided. How did David deal with that? By focusing on how great God is. Mm -hmm. By just focusing, God, there's none like you. You're full of compassion. You, you answer prayer. You're, you're always good. You're always ready to forgive. I mean, he just goes on and on, all these great attributes of God. So I want you to do that right now. You. Will you just pause for a moment and look at these verses? And start thanking God that He's good. Thanking God that He's ready to forgive. Thanking God that He's plenteous in mercy. He's gracious. He's long-suffering. That He answers prayer. Thank Him and praise Him. Just take a moment right now. Lord, we praise You that You are above all other gods. You do wondrous works, Lord. You, your works are awesome, O oh God. There's none that can compare with You. Hallelujah. Just focus on Him. Praise I'm going to ask Nicole to lead us in that song again, which really is just singing the basis of verse 11. But as she's leading us in that song, will you be thanking God for His goodness, for Him being plenteous in mercy and compassion, that He is above all other gods and that He answers prayer? Let's focus on Him, and that will unite our heart. Teach me your ways, O Lord. our prayer today teach me your ways O Lord that I might walk in them yes. unite my heart to fear your name Ryan, what do you think it means to fear the name of the Lord to be in fear of God to be in fear of God to uh, reverence him um, he is an awesome God yep. he's bigger and mightier and, and more powerful than anything so we fear him for his goodness we respect him for who he is and what he has done so it's not a fear that says, i got to run high. It's not that kind of fear. Mm -hmm. But you use the word awesome, and that's exactly what the Hebrew word means. Awesome. It means to be in awe of God. You use the word reverent, and that's exactly what this word fear means. To be, And I didn't even prep on that. You just got that right on your own. <laughs> I just knew that. And, and to fear the Lord means to reverence Him yes. and to be in awe of Him. Now think about that. If you're worried about something, are you in awe of God at that moment? Yeah. To be. Are you saying, God, you're, you're above all this, you're greater than all this? No, we're, we're letting our heart be divided with our worry rather than being awed and reverencing God. That's why worship and, and knowing these psalms are so important. When you start focusing back on who God is, really good worship songs focus on who God is and puts our heart and our attention upon who He is. Well, I said there are five requests, and Lorraine's going to help me with a couple of them. The first request is just teach me your ways, Lord, that I would walk in them. And I said, Lord, I want to know the right way to live. If you show me the right, right way, I'll do it, Lord. And I hope that's your heart. Lord, if you'll show me, I'll do it. And then this prayer, unite my heart, because I want to be more in awe of you. I want to reverence you more, so unite my heart. But in verse 4, uh, he asks the Lord, and I just rephrase it a little bit, he asked the Lord to restore joy to his life. Mm -hmm. Joy. 
Notice it says, Rejoice the soul of your servant. Rejoice the soul of your servant. Talk about himself. And that's an odd way of saying it. Rejoice my soul. But he's actually saying, Lord, on, on my soul, on my soul level, let me rejoice. I need joy to be revived. Mm -hmm. And if your heart is, is, is dividing a little bit, you need your joy revived. Yes. Brent, what are some verses on joy that you like? To yes, add? I have. John 15, 11. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. John 17, 13, But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. John 16, 21, A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 12, 3, Therefore with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Romans 14, 17, For the kingdom of God is not eat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, I was thinking of that drawing water from the well. Yeah. It's there. It's available for you. Yeah. You just have to draw on that to experience the joy. And one of the ways that we can draw joy out of the well of salvation is by focusing on God and worshiping Him. That's why uh, worship songs and, and even singing through the Psalms is so important because it's drawing joy out of the well of salvation. It's already provided for you. It's a part of the kingdom, Romans said. And notice John, those passages in John. Jesus said, I want my joy fulfilled in them. I want my joy fulfilled in you. So He wants His joy to be in your heart. But to have that, you have to focus on Him. Yes. Unite my heart. Yes. And then you can have that joy. And in verse 4, He asks for something else. Uh, he says, Rejoice the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy. And to those who call upon you. You know, one of the things that He's asking for in His, in his time of struggle and we read this from something else David wrote in 2 Samuel 22, 4. Is he's asking for strength. Rejoice the soul of your servant, for to you I lift up my soul. You know, Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah. And there are times we need to ask the Lord for strength. Lord, I need strength. Uh, I'm feeling weak. And when we're feeling weak, that's when we're vulnerable to these other pulling away of our heart. So what are some passages on strength when we need strength from the Lord? Yeah. 2 Samuel 22, 40, For you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued me under those who rose against me. Isaiah 40, verse 31, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 41, 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 3.16 That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Amen. Now, So maybe today you're feeling like you're struggling with something. You're going through something. Why don't you ask the Lord for these two things. Lord, give me joy. And Lord, give me strength. Mm -hmm. And those two are really tied together. I know Lorraine used to have a saying, I'm not going to let them steal my joy. You know, people would criticize or this and that. I'm not going to let them steal my joy. Well, don't let anyone or anything steal your joy. And one way of maintaining your joy is focusing on Him and keeping your heart united. One last thing He asked for, and then I'll ask Lorraine to, to lead us in prayer for those that maybe you need joy, maybe you need strengthening today so that your heart can be united. And then we'll close by singing this verse 11 again. But at the very end of the, of the psalm, or toward the end of, at least, notice what David uh, is asking the Lord for. In verse 17 he says, Show me a sign for good. Now a lot of people think it's wrong to ask for a sign. Some translations translate that word sign as a token. In other words, a sign that we're in covenant. Mm -hmm. Basically what David is saying here is, I'm going to paraphrase it, but I think it's practical for us. He's saying, Lord, do something. Lord, do something. I can't tell you what to do. I don't know exactly how you'll do it. But Lord, I need you to do something. Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt that way? 
God, I just need you to do something. I don't even know what to tell you to do, but I need you to do something. And notice the result. He says, he prays that the wicked will see it, that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed. They'll see God working on David's behalf. And then he says, because you, Lord, have helped me and have comforted me. He's looking back on his past. He's saying, Lord, there's many times you've helped me and there's many times you've comforted me. So, Lord, would you do another sign? Would you do another token of the covenant that, that, that I have with you? Lord, would you do something? And maybe you're discouraged today over a loved one or a situation. Think back. He's comforted you in the past. And He's helped you in the past. So just ask Him. Don't try and think ahead of time how He'll do it. Just say, God, do something. In your wisdom, do something. Because I know you've, in the past, Lord, you've comforted me and you've helped me. That's another way of saying, Lord, I know you're going to help me and comfort me now. So, Lord, do something. And we're going to pray for you. The three of us are going to join our faith right now as Lorraine leads us in prayer. And we're going to believe that God Himself, this day, will do something for you. Amen. We don't even know what it is or we can't dictate to Him what or how. Mm -hmm. But let's agree together that God will do something mm -hmm. to show that He's in covenant with you. And that you can focus on Him and your heart will be united. And you'll fear His name. You'll reverence Him and be in awe of Him. Lorraine, lead us in prayer. We're going to agree with you as you pray that God will do something right now today for everyone listening. And then we'll close with that song again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lord God, thank you, Jesus. I them. pray, God, I pray for the one listening out there that you will stop the worry. Yes. Be not anxious. Put down the helmet of salvation. Rejoice in the Lord, knowing that He will give you strength to get through the trial. Yes. Turn your worry into maybe concern. But put your concern into God's hands, knowing His Word and the promises He has and what He's done before, that He will indeed be there. He will indeed work. He will yes. indeed moving. His time is not our time. His ways are not our ways. But He is at the helm. He yes. is in control. And we give it to Him. Thank so stop Lord. the worry. Yes. Start rejoicing, yes. knowing that God will give you strength for what you need. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, let's close our time together by Jesus. worshiping the Lord with this verse and song again. Focus on Him and your heart will be united. Teach me your ways, O oh Lord.